In case you missed it in last week's video update, we were able to get both window retainer frames bonded to the inside of the cabin structure. And not only that, we also were able to get both new teak panels fitted and installed into place. And, and let me tell you, it looks beautiful. Baby and I are really happy with the results. Things are really starting to look up over in this section of the boat project. And we're looking forward to moving on and making more progress this week. So if you didn't see last week's video, we cover a lot of progress. A lot of projects get touched and worked on in that video. And this week's no different. We're going to make a lot more progress again in this week's video as well. So stay tuned. We hope you enjoy it. So yeah, right in this area here, it was all rotted. You can push your finger through it. And now we have a new panel. And remember the splice was right here. Right in this area, just barely cut the corner off the window and it went down to here. Now we put the splice, the seam over here. So, which I think is a better place for it because it lines up with the seam on the opposite side of the boat. We still need to paint this piece of wood white. It's already epoxy coated, so it's protected from moisture, but I still want to paint it white before we close this area, which we have plenty of time to get to that. So we still got to install the new lenses that we cut out and put the frames and everything back in, but we're getting there a little bit at a time. Hey guys, if these boats are rocking, don't bother knocking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. We're rocking oh, up yeah. here. Wow. Welcome back to another exciting and thrill filled adventure with DIY Nautical Dream. Welcome back to another episode of DIY Nautical Dream. Wow! How's that for a pretty unique location to do our intro from? On the flight deck of a 777. It's not something you see every day, unless you're a pilot. Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Priscilla. I'm by myself this week's episode. Stay tuned. How's it going? Hi guys! Hey guys! Welcome, Welcome back. back! I'm Priscilla. And I'm Rich. Together, Together we, we make DIY, DIY Nautical, Nautical Dream. Dream. Alright, so let's go straight to this week's update. Yep. We're going to be test feeding the new F large window lens. And if we're lucky and all goes well... <laughs> <laughs> if we did our job right. Yep. First pass quality. Yep. <laughs> If all goes well, we will install the large aft lens with a butyl tape. Yeah, we'll seal it in there. We'll bed it down with some butyl tape instead of the old 3M 5200. Oh, yeah. Doesn't belong above the waterline. We're not using it unless we absolutely need to. And in this case, we don't need to because of maintenance, possibility of having to replace the lens, leaks, whatever. Butyl tape is the way to go in that application. So hopefully we get to that point and all goes well and we can install it. Yep. All right, so stay tuned, guys, as we show you our update this week. Yep, wish us luck. These things are buggers to put in. When we did the ones over here, we had some uh, we had some risky, we had some risky <laughs> business going on over there. So just uh, fingers. We're ready. Fingers crossed. Yep. Yep. We'll get there. All right. All right. We'll see you in a little bit. Okay, for today's project, we're gonna work on the new lens that we're working on right now. Is gonna go up into that cutout up there. That lens that's right there will go into that cutout right there. We've already verified that one fits. We're good with that. So we're going to move on and make sure the other one fits now also. And then we'll, we'll prepare to start mounting those later. And Baby will be the one. She's going to be working that forward lens 
all the way through start to finish. Is that something you feel comfortable doing? Yeah, I can try. Is that something that's in your wheelhouse? You got the uh, skills and ability to do all that? Yes. Right on. Got it. Okay. <laughs> you guys heard that. Baby's got it in her wheelhouse to do that. So. This is a hard lesson learned here, man. Do not leave tape on the outside of the boat in the weather for a long time. It does not come off as easy as it goes on. Well, that really speeds things up. Okay. We need to do this more often. Okay. This Bring makes it fun. We're making a little more progress now that the sun's off of it, but man, earlier it did not want to come off. See, this is all tape right here. Still stuck on there. I want a nice clean surface because we're going to put a uh, beetle tape on here around the window cut out and uh, plus we don't we're eventually going to want to polish the boat we don't want all this usually acetone's pretty good about cleaning stuff up but well, it's starting to get there a little bit yeah. this was that clear packing tape and it just it's great for real temporary, but if you're going to leave it on there for weeks and months, don't do it. It's not worth it. And we have this put on all over the place, so we're going to regret this. We finally got all that clear packing tape residue and leftover tape removed. Uh, we have this stuff all over on the boat, so we're going to be cleaning this off for a long time to come. Well, this is about as good as we're going to get it for right now. We're going to start losing daylight pretty soon. And I still want to get this window temporarily installed just for overnight. And then we'll pop it out again tomorrow and put the butyl tape in. And we'll try and, you know, do a little bit better finish work on some of these spots right here. But all in all, it's filled in from where it was before. It's not pretty. We're going to have to come back and do some more filler work on it. But uh, for the sake of time... I just want to get the window installed and we can always come back and um, butyl tape's cheap. We can always re-bed it later and uh, we just want to get the window in for now, the lens. So that's what we got. I had to clean off all that tape that was on here. Man, don't ever use clear tape on a boat. It's no fun. I don't know what gets that stuff off easy, but everything I tried doesn't work. Acetone, wire brush, scraper, sandpaper. Oh man, none of it seemed to do any favors. So. Anyways, we got it to a spot where we can be happy with it, and we'll go ahead and probably install that lens now and then temporarily fasten it in. We're just doing a temporary install here, but still want to get this cleaned out. Mainly just want to see how, how good it all fits in there. So, so what we have here, as you can see, we have a slight bevel on the edge here, all the way around. And I put that in there in hopes of just making sure that it sits in a little bit closer to this, because there's a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a radius there. So we just want to make sure we have a really good fit. No butyl tape this time, we're just going to put it in and attach the frame. We'll come back and add butyl tape probably tomorrow. Right now we just want to get a couple, a couple screws in here to hold it in place. So that seems like a good one there. None of these are going to go in super tight. We're just going to put them in snug. And the reason for that is because we're going to be pulling this back off at least one more time to add some butyl tape to it. 
but we would like to know the holes are located properly, which I believe they are. Some of them I filled in with epoxy when I was doing the repairs down there, but those ones will do last just because I'm gonna have to redrill those. So that one seems like it's got some epoxy in it. So we're just gonna we're just gonna run the drill in there a little bit. So all we need to do is create a little pilot hole for it. All those look like they've been filled in with epoxy. So we'll go ahead and grab that one next. That one, that one. Okay. okay. Nothing too tight, but we do have to locate some holes now. Oh, maybe not. If I can just get the drill bit to push it in then that means the epoxy didn't go in very far which would be a big plus Last thing we want to do is break a screw off in here. I already did that. Been there, done that. Not any fun. So I think it's time for a new tip. When that starts happening like that consistently, then it's time for a new tip. Okay. All right. Do a little clean up here. All right. Okay, well here's our temporary install. Tomorrow we'll finish it up. We'll pull this off and apply the butyl tape and pull the paper off and everything. I just wanted to get a really good dry fit on it. And it fits in there pretty solid. There's a little bit of space. And that's okay, because once we put the butyl tape in there, it'll take care of all the, the space and it'll make a nice good ceiling surface for this so this is probably not going to leak again not anytime soon so we'll pull this apart reseal it with butyl tape tomorrow and then just slowly keep tightening the screws down over over the course of the next couple weeks and we'll get good squeeze out on here and that'll be it but yeah we went ahead and got all that clear tape that was on here off man that was a job and a half and you can see down here where we still got some repair work to do and uh, we'll come back to that. But for now, we just want to get this lens in and move on. We can always pop this off again later. And once I know how to apply gel coat and color match, then we'll take care of that. But for now, it's going to stay the way it is. And then the next one will be uh, right up here. That one's going to be baby's project. So anyways. So yeah, that turned out pretty good. And then here's the problem we got going on next. Is we got all that clear tape on here. And have to pull all that off and clean that up, sand it. Man, that's a good afternoon at work right there just to get that clean and prepped. But that's all right, live and learn. We're gonna quit using that clear tape eventually. This stuff's problematic. All right. So here's the inside view of it. You can see it's right little bit of gap in there which is good because we need room for the butyl tape to go in there 
sealed up. And then, uh, yeah, that'll be cool. And then eventually, eventually we'll be putting this back on. It'll be all good to go. On that one. Then we gotta do that one still. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pull these screws that we temporarily installed last night. Pull this frame off, the retainer frame, and then we'll pull the lens out. We'll peel the protective coating paper off of the lens, and then we'll go ahead and prepare to butyl tape and install this permanently. See if I can get this out without having to go down the stairs. I have to go downstairs and knock it out. Be right back. Okay, so now we got the lens back out. So we'll pick this up and we will prepare the surface by applying a small layer of butyl tape all the way around the inside of this here. And then we'll put the lens in and then we'll put some butyl tape around the outside seam of the lens and this structure here and then we'll put another layer right here so they'll touch each other and then this will pro provide a really good seal moisture won't get in here we won't have to worry about water weather getting into the lens and leaking inside the boat damaging our new teak that we're installing all right so we're getting ready to install our butyl tape and here's the butyl tape we're going to be using hopefully we'll have enough if not, we'll have some more inside, but it's a different color. I prefer to stay with the same color if we can, but we'll see how it goes. This is gonna come apart again after we've had a winter to let it settle in and see if anything's leaking and rebed it with new butyl tape. So if the colors don't match for now, we'll come back and, and reapply new butyl tape. And that'll be when we probably go ahead and refinish this with some gel coat and things like that once I know how to match the colors better. Right now I'm not sure if I know how to match them so I don't want to make that attempt and make a big mistake. Then we'll just have to sand all that away later. So we'll go ahead and start putting the butyl tape in here and then uh, get ready to put the lens back in. I'm stretching it a little bit just because we don't really need it to be that thick. And it is kind of sticky, so it's trying to stick to me at the same time. I think we'll do this differently here. Otherwise the lens won't fit in. It's not an exact science. The one thing I learned about using butyl tape on the other side is a little goes a long ways. We added too much over there and it's still squeezing out to this day because we added so much that we couldn't tighten the screws all the way without deforming the frame. So I'm trying to learn a little bit from that, but we'll see how it goes. I think we're gonna have plenty, so. Mostly in the corners is where these things start to leak, especially on the forward corner. Because of the seawater's kind of coming in, you know, if the boat's underway and it's in heavy seas or whatever, water kind of comes up with a little bit of force, pulling off some more. It's easier to work with shorter sections, so we'll try to, it's easier to manage that way. Adding a little bit more here. And like I said, this stuff likes to stick to itself and everything else around it. Usually it st sticks to everything except for where you want it to stick. It's kind of like clay. If you haven't worked with it before, I think that's the kind of the best description of it. It's kind of like working with clay, a sticky kind of clay.
I'm doing a little pre-stretch before we put it in. It makes it a little bit easier, I think. I kind of adjust as we go on my technique and process how I'm doing this. Because I don't have a ton of experience working with it. So the important part is we don't have any leaks when we're done. How it looks going in isn't going to matter because anything that squeezes out will get trimmed off over time. And as long as it doesn't leak, we'll never know how ugly it was when we put it together. Because it'll all flatten out and become a good sealing surface in the end. Now, when we go to put the lens in, it's going to be a little bit tougher to fit it in than it was before. Because now we're going to be fighting with some of this uh, butyl tape. That's okay. All we really need to do is just have enough to be able to get the screw started when we install. This is the problem we had on the other side was same thing, just lots of beetle tape. As you can see, we added probably more than we needed to here as well. And so we're gonna have to be really slow when we're putting the screws in, not to run them down too tight. We gotta work this through. So now what we need to do is we need to, so what we're gonna do is take a small scraper, start working an edge up like that. Get that out of the way. Our plan here is to make sure we have a good overlap from here down to here. Ultimately, we'd like our squeeze, squeeze out to come out a little here and a little down there. On the other side, I added way too much. So this time, I'll probably overcorrect and add too little, but we'll see. I know it's not gonna leak, so we'll just kinda adjust and see how it goes. We're going to rebed this again, but for right now, we just want to get it sealed, get the frame on, move forward. Yeah, we're just wrapping it around the edge here, thinning it a little bit as we go, stretching it. Because it doesn't need to go on. It doesn't need to go on as thick as it comes off the roll. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest. We'll come back and catch up later. You get the idea, right? All right, so here's the uh, view of what it looks like with the butyl tape in, uh, applied. And we're just looking to seal this outer edge. We're not looking to like have tons of squeeze out or anything like that. We just wanna have just enough so that it's a consistent seal all the way around. And we can always redo this again later if it's not what we like, but I think we're gonna be good on this. And we'll just slowly tighten the screws down today we won't run them down all the way. We'll just run them down to where they're snug and we'll start the squeeze out process. It takes quite a while to get these lenses to seat all the way. So it'll be probably every week we'll tighten them down a little bit more until we get to the point where we feel like it's completely bedded. Yeah, that's what we're going to do next. We'll start installing the frame and add some screws. To save a little bit of time, we went ahead and installed the stainless steel retainer frame off camera. You saw us put that on earlier. So you can already see 
you can already see some of the squeeze out around the edges there and so we ran these down with the power screwdriver and now we're at the point where I don't want to go any tighter with the, the power screwdriver because I want to be able to feel the pressure and so we'll go get the hand screwdriver and run these down by hand now okay so we got the hand screwdriver we're gonna start tightening these down a little bit by hand just till we start to feel a fair amount of resistance So squeeze out's happening on the inside of the lens also on the inside of the boat because we got butyl tape on there as well so we are getting squeeze out on both sides. And you can tell when you're running these down with the screwdriver because the screws start to get loose again. Except for down here these ones not getting loose as fast so that we're getting there down here we're not getting much squeeze out so we'll see what happens So that's what it looks like the squeeze out process has begun some areas it's squeezing out sooner than others but we'll just gradually keep turning the screws until we get good consistent squeeze out all the way around some areas we're having less than others like down here we're not having we're not having much squeeze out but you can see down in there that it is sealed it just hasn't come up this way yet so and remember the lens wasn't seated all the way yet either so We've got squeeze out going on on the inside of the boat as well as on the exterior side. So it's just a slow process. We'll have to continue to come back and tighten the screws over time, even a couple weeks from now, and eventually it'll be set. You can see we're getting pretty good and consistent squeeze out of the butyl tape all the way around with the exception of the lower center area, but it will come around over time, we're hoping. And uh, but yeah, it's just really nice to get these uh, large lenses starting to put them back in and sealing everything up and here's a shot of the inside action we're getting good uh, butyl tape squeeze out on the inside as well and then we'll just let that continue to do that and eventually we'll take a plastic scraper and scrape the excess off and see if we can reuse it somewhere else well wouldn't you know it just when we thought we were doing really good making good time we shifted to the forward window cutout we're in the process of removing the screws that were holding the wooden frame in while it was uh, curing and one of them snapped off Oh, isn't that lovely? Well, we'll get it. So yeah, that, that broken screw was on the outside where we were trying to install the uh, retainer ring on here. And I got a little too greedy. The screw was epoxied in when we bonded in the window retainer frames. Oh man, and it broke. So anyways, we have to drill that one out. So <laughs> hopefully we can get that out. I've drilled them out before. I mean, I've, I've had pretty good success drilling them out. So, but... It's on the outside up in the gel coat fiberglass so we'll just have to get it easy out and drill it out hopefully we don't break the easy out you know yeah what's easy out easy out is like easy in but on the way out instead of on the way in yep all right we'll get it figure it out don't worry so the problem we're dealing with here is i was take trying to take a screw out and it broke and you can see right here where the screw bro broke off below the surface here so now I've got basically two choices. First choice is try to drill that with an easy out, but I have to get a hole started in the center of this screw first, which we have a little bit of a drill start right there I just got going. So we have a little bit of success getting the drill started in the center of the screw shank area there. And so we'll try and see how that works. If that's not successful, then we're gonna have to just grind this open and 
either cut a slot in the tip right here. We'll grind this open and cut a slot in the tip and try and get it out with a standard screwdriver. Or we'll have to try and grind it out enough to where we can grab on it with a pair of pliers or vice grips and twist it out that way. And if we have to do that, then we have to fill all this back in with thickened epoxy, let it cure, relocate the hole and all that. That is not the preferred route, but we'll see what happens here. So stay tuned. Wish us luck. All right, so we're gonna try and drill this out a little bit more. Let me move this just a little bit over here. Uh, it's not drilling very easy, but I'm trying to drill a, I'm trying to drill a guide hole for the next size up screw or next size up drill to follow so I don't draw out the side of the shank of the screw somewhere. Oh, let's see here. I think we I think we lost it. I think we lost it. I think it already started to go outside. Let's see here. Hmm. Well, we might get lucky, so stand by. I'm gonna get a pair of pliers. The chances of this working is slim to none, but we're gonna give it a try. just went from bad to worse so what happened here is now the easy out is broke off inside the screw that's broke off in the hole okay so now this complicates things even more because now we have that piece of the easy out sticking in the hole of the shank of the screw that's broke off so now we're gonna have to get that out yeah, this is gonna be an ugly one. I I knew it. I knew it when it happened. Man. All right. Well, stay tuned. We'll come up with something else. All I can say, things are gonna get ugly now. Man, this is not what we wanted. Okay. Well, we had no joy on that one. Uh, the easy out actually broke off inside the hole of the screw that's broken off. So now we're just gonna go with the plan B, and we're just gonna grind this hole out real big until we can get a pair of ice grips on it and we'll pull this broken screw out and then we'll have to remake we'll have to fill the hole with thickened epoxy and locate a new hole later so that's just the way it goes I'm not gonna mess around with it Come on. 
because we got to go bigger. Well, let's see what we can get here. <sighs> here we go. This looks promising. Okay, well, we got it. It was ugly, but we got it. Oh, wow. It was a little more than just ugly. We should have stopped, went and bought the right tool for the job. We had to use a large pair of vice grips instead of uh, like a pair of needle nose vice grips. So I had to make the hole a lot bigger than I wanted to. But we'll fill it up and we'll fix it and it won't be... We'll make it to where it's not noticeable in the end. Okay, we'll fill it in with some thickened epoxy and eventually we'll come back and go over it with some gel coat and it'll blend in and you won't see it but for now we're just gonna fill it with thick and epoxy and call it a day so we're gonna clean the hole with some acetone this will get rid of all the, the loose stuff all right so that's pretty clean We just use regular old acetone. Now we have to go under it with some tape. Otherwise the thickened epoxy is going to start slumping on us. Or sagging, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to do this to kind of just hold it in there. And we'll go mix up some thickened epoxy and fill this hole. Be right back. All right, so we just mixed up some really thick, thickened epoxy. And we're going to use it to fill up that hole. And then we'll fare it out later. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put a couple more, a couple more stirs on this just to make sure it's mixed up really well. Because we want this to hold for a long time. I made a little too much. I always end up doing that. But it's better to have more than I need than less because otherwise we have to go mix more in a hurry. And we don't want to do that. So this will be just fine. I know this is really exciting to everybody, but just in case you haven't seen this done before, this is how you mix it. And we're gonna have lots of opportunities to mix thick and epoxy on this boat project, so no worries. If you miss it this time, you'll see it another time later. Okay, we're gonna start packing it in there. What I like to do is I kinda like to just swirl it around Make sure we're not getting any voids or air pockets in there in the beginning. Just kind of wetting out the hole. I 
a little bit. We'll add some more. So we only really needed, I only really needed to make one pump each. One pump would have been enough. Let's see. I think we're just about there. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's it. We're just gonna leave it like that, let it cure, and then we'll come back and uh, sand over it, ferret, and then we'll have it ready for whenever we decide to add gel coat to it later. Whenever I learn how to do that part. Anyways, that's where we're at. We went ahead and filled it with thickened epoxy and we fared it pretty much flush with the surface. And then at some point we'll come back, we'll sand this and make it a little shy of the surface and add filling compound, or a fairing compound I mean. And then at some point we'll be able to add a gel coat back over this. It's not like it's the only area on the boat that needs gel coat treatment. so. Is just add to the list and eventually we'll get good at gel coat and be able to come back and repair this with gel coat and you'll never see it happen. All right, so. Where are we at, honey? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Struggling in, we're basically in struggler's paradise right now. And uh, that, Strugglers like us. Yeah, that large opening hatch lens, the forward one, is giving me a run for the money, that's for sure. So we're hoping to be ready for baby to go ahead and do the install on the new lens that she cut out and. Still waiting. Yep, yeah, but. I broke a screw off and it was a number six uh, stainless, so it was a really tiny one. I tried to drill it out and use an easy out to pull it out. The easy out broke in it, probably because I didn't have the hole in deep enough, but it's a really it's a really skinny screw and it was tough. So I messed that up. So then I had to resort to plan B, which, which was pretty much demolish the whole structure around it and use the wrong tool to do the right job. So anyways, Needless to say, the broken screw is out and we have filled the hole with thick and epoxy and we'll be uh, repairing that one as well. Yep. Anyways, he's having fun, so that's what matters, right? Oh yeah, we're having fun and learning along the way, so I should know better, but I had to give it a try to get it out that way and uh, it wasn't successful and then the easy out broke, so whatever. We got it out and that's what matters. We'll get it back together and hopefully uh, next time we're here, we'll be putting that lens in. Yep. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we're Stay in tuned. it. We're in it and uh, we're having fun along the way. So we're making progress. All right, so check it out. We got the new lens in. We have the uh, butyl tape installed. You can see that it's squeezing out on the outside as well as on the inside here. And that squeeze out process is gonna take about a week or two. We'll just gradually keep tightening the screws until everything's fully bedded and seated in really good. And then this, this uh, new lens should be sealed in pretty good. But so far it's looking really good. We're really happy with that. And can't wait to see the next one completed as well. So you can see we still got a little ways to go on the one over there. But Baby has cut the new lens and she has beveled the edges and trimmed it. So it should be a drop in fit when we're ready to put it in. But we have a lot of prep work to do on the outside of the hull. And so here's the, the trim ring. And see, once the trim ring's installed, let's see here. Okay, so that's just sitting in there, but see, once the trim ring's installed, installed, you're not gonna see any of the uh, butyl tape or any of the outside framing like we were seeing just a second ago. So that's kind of basically what the finished product's gonna look like right there. Not too bad, huh? We really did ourselves a lot of extra work that we don't need to do when we use that clear tape we're not going to use that again i think i have an idea how we can use the clear tape clear tape and we won't have that problem again but for right now we're going to have a lot of cleanup on the outside of the boat over there and uh, this side we spent a good couple hours cleaning that up on the outside yesterday evening and it turned out really well but it took a lot of work so we don't want to we don't want to keep doing that to ourselves going forward so we'll find a different way to do it and save some time but yeah it's looking pretty good Pretty happy with that. Step back and kind of get a look at what it looks like. It's 
So eventually it'll look like this side when we're done, and this side turned out really well. We'll just keep on making progress a little bit at a time, and eventually we'll have this side finish the same as the other side. My boat. It's so calm out right now, we'd even look good coming in and out of the marina. Oh man, that's a beautiful one right there. We have a little bit of an incline today. Oh, it's, uh, it's nothing compared to the camp floor. <laughs> All right, so we're back, guys. Yep, we're back. What do back. you think, honey? Well, we had some luck and we had some not so good luck. Yeah. So I don't know. In the end, we got it. And uh, you know, like we were talking about earlier, we had that broken screw, and that was rather unfortunate. And it sure would have been nice if I had the right tool for the job at the time, but I kind of mangulated that hole, as you guys saw in the video. But uh, hey, we got the broken screw out and the broken easy out. So yep. Yep. whatever it takes, whatever we it takes. will make it happen. The nice thing about fiberglass, we can repair it and make it look like it never happened. And so this is one of those situations where nobody's ever gonna see that. I don't like to do that kind of damage, but it happens and we got through it. And now we have the right tool for the job next time should that situation ever come up again. So we're working on it. And uh, you know, sometimes I just get in a hurry and I don't want to stop, so. All right, so wrap it up, honey. Yeah, so it's really <laughs> cool to have that newly smoked window lens installed, huh? Little tint added to it. We didn't have that when we bought the boat, but we have a little bit of tint on the windows now. I think it looks good. Like yep. it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it looks sharp. My idea. Yeah, I know. <laughs> all right, so we just, uh, want to say thank you to all the new subscribers, all the new viewers, all of you are helping us get to the mark where we're at today. And we're really trying to hit that goal of 1000 mm -hmm. subscribers. We're getting close and it's all because of you guys sticking with us and subscribing and watching our videos. So we just want to say thank you. And guys, please watch it from the very beginning up until the end. Oh yeah. That, really help us. That'll make baby really <laughs> happy. We want to keep her happy. All right. All right. So if you are not subscribed yet, please, please subscribe, subscribe down, down below. below. Ding, Whee! ding, ding, ding. Ding, oh. right? Okay. <laughs> Wherever that, it's somewhere right around here. So yeah. yeah, click that, subscribe. Let us know you're here. Drop by, say hi. We'd love to hear from you. Okay. So see you. See ya. Have a good day. Dang, if I only hit record, man. Okay. <laughs>
So yeah, we just really want to say thanks to all of our longtime subscribers. And oh man, did you record Dang. it? Man, I thought you were gonna push the button this time. <laughs> Is it on? Can you see the red light? I did it. I think I did. Oh, okay, man. Can't. That was a lot of footage to shoot without hitting the button. Oh, dang. I think I forgot to hit record. <laughs> like always. Oh, man. Is it recording? No. I think you did. Or maybe not. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hey, Welcome guys. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm Priscilla. And I'm Rich. Together. <laughs> hey, we're together. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so if you haven't subscribed yet, oh man, dang it. I don't Again. think I, did I hit it? Can you see the? No, you didn't. Man. Oh, you did. Is it? No, we have to redo it. Oh man. Yep. These GoPros, man. Yep. All right. Time for a new one. <laughs> did we record it? Hang on, no, 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 no. <laughs>